Hello, my friend, and welcome to this episode of A Call to Leadership. I'm Dr. Nate Sala, your host. I'm so glad you are here. On this episode of A Call to Leadership, we're going to look inside. Look inside the mind of the follower, the person who you are either currently leading or recruiting to lead, someone who you desire to perhaps to be on your team, in your camp, someone who perhaps is already in your family, and you're having perhaps difficulty influencing, or perhaps you don't know exactly how to share your vision of the future that is compelling enough. And this episode is for you. If those are questions you have, I've struggled with those questions in my life, and I've found great strength in answering these two fundamental questions. And if you've been listening to the show, you might have heard me talk about this on a previous episode. It's the questions that everyone asks in their own mind, in their own heart. Sometimes it's consciously, sometimes it's subconsciously, but they ask this question before they embark on a journey with you as a leader, because that's what we're doing, right? We're going someplace, hopefully, because if you're not going anywhere, what do you need to be led for? But if you're going someplace, you must have these two questions in your repertoire at all times. Number one, do you know where you're going? The first question that every follower is asking in their mind is, do you know? Can you share where you are going? Because I can't hope to follow you unless you're leading me to a place I want to go. A better future, a, a, a brighter future, a, a future with greater purpose. And this is most apparent now more than ever, even in the last few years during the pandemic, post pandemic, what was happening with people? People were having existential crises. Gosh, people are dying all around me. Life is changing in an instant. I've spent all this time chasing, challenging, going, and here I am. I could be next. And what do people do? They say, I need to hit pause. I need to reevaluate my life. I need to reevaluate what my purpose is. What's most important? What are my priorities? And can you blame people for that? Because when you're faced with the possible end of your existence as you know it on this planet, You think about it. And the big question is, what is the meaning? Where are we going? Is it a place where I want to go? As leaders, we must first identify that. We must first know where we're going. And then we can share that with others. Now, not everyone is going to want to go where you're going. Not everyone's going to want to go where I'm going. For example, with this show, the only people who are going to listen to this show or watch it on social are the people who desire to go where I am going to take them. That's you. But for the vast majority of other people, they don't want to go there, and that's totally fine. Same for you. There's people who are not meant to join you on your journey. They're just not. And it's okay if you leave without them. It's totally okay. Only the ones who are going to benefit, and I mean benefit from the outcomes you desire to create, should join you. Now, that is a difficult conversation, especially when you want others to join you, i.e. you want to influence people because you believe that collectively you will be able to achieve. And perhaps that's you right now, is perhaps there's a roadblock, perhaps there's an impasse, perhaps there is something that is keeping you from achieving with someone because you have not illuminated fully how they can seek pleasure and avoid pain in that journey because that's really the fundamental, the basic human needs. As humanity, our number one, our number one need is what? Survival. Right? Because if you're not alive, what other needs matter? 
So survival is our, our, our basic human need. I mean, even and, and when we're talking about it from a, a, a factor of physical survival, sometimes we're talking about it from a spiritual survival for those of us who believe in an afterlife, right? It's, it's continued survival. It's continued existence. And we, we seek this. Not everyone does. But avoiding pain, as, as, as Jeremy Bentham put it back in, gosh, the 1800s, I want to say, 17, 1800s, uh, he, he considered this, uh, the, that humanity was under the sovereign governance of pain and pleasure. And so when we're talking about how to truly influence and lead, where we're going is going to give someone else a, a, an understanding of, of this what leads me to possible pleasure or this leads me to more pain. Sometimes you got to go through a little pain to get to pleasure. And that's true. The second question is equally important. And here it is. Does the follower, have I communicated in such a way that not only I know where I'm going, but I know how to get there? Look, friend, you can, you can convince someone all day of the destination. But unless you have a strategy, unless you have a plan that helps others to realize, oh, okay, not only do you go someplace that I want to go, but you have a way to get there. Now, that doesn't mean that you have all the answers because that's not how life works. Because you need others to help you to make that journey work. But you must have the basics, the framework of what's important, how to achieve your desired end state. And so this is a, these are questions. These are two questions that are always asked. Do I know where I'm going? Do I know how to get there? Now, you say, Nate, is that it? No, uh-uh, because there's so much more wrapped up in that. What else is wrapped up in that? Well, think about how compelling your story is when you are attempting to, to uh, convey or persuade someone to join you on a journey. First of all, what do they want? That's important. Understanding what other people want. But not just from the perspective of what they want, but how does it relate to what your principles are, you, what you truly value? And when I say that, I, I, I speak that in a way that you must communicate in, in such a compelling way where you desire to go by attracting the kind of people that believe what you believe. This isn't, um, this isn't uh, uh, having a mindset that is uh, exclusive. Uh, in some ways, yes, belief can be exclusive. But what I mean by belief is saying, here are the principles that guide us to the des- destination we want to reach, reach. Do you share in those principles? I'll give you an example. Recently, we've been interviewing. We've got lots of potential new hires, and we're growing as a company. And I've been sharing during these interviews my vision for the future. I've been sharing in these interviews our values and and the stories around those values and why those values matter. And what's happening in the interviews is people are understanding my heart, my mind, And they're beginning to assess whether or not I'm the kind of leader that is worthy to be followed, that our cause is worthy to be pursued. Are you the kind of leader who is worthy to be followed and your cause is worthy to be pursued? Now, I've been finding overwhelmingly that people who assign themselves to a vision and say, I agree not only with your vision, but I want to be a part of it. They're bound. They want to be a part of it. And so I find that that's a, that's a game changer, friend. That's a game changer for you and for me. Because then people are willing to say, I'm going to say no to all these other offers. Because your environment is the most attractive. It is the most worth, worthwhile. And I am dedicated to helping achieve that. It's, it's such great power to, to communicate not only where you're going, not only how you're going to get there, but the mechanics and the undergirding of the 
principles and values that are non-negotiable to get you there. And so as you think about your own journey as a leader, think about how do I convey what's important? How do I convey my priorities? How do I convey my resolve? Not only your resolve, but also your humility. In fact, I, I love Jim Collins' approach when he says level five leadership. That's what he considered the highest pinnacle of leadership. I guess a pinnacle would be the highest. It says like this. He says level five leadership is a combination of fierce will and personal humility. So professional will is another way he calls it. And personal humility. And when you combine those, he believes, he, he suggests that this is the level five leader. So where is your will? Where is your resolve, your professional intentionality, your, your intensity? Is it at a level five? Is it the very highest of, of, of I will not stop until after my last breath? And the other side is, do I walk in such a way that I'm not the center of the world? Do I walk in such a way that I elevate the mission and the people above my own self-interest? Those are, those, are, those are extremely effective ways to begin to move the needle forward in how we assemble individuals to join us on our cause. And as we do that, then we realize that, wow, People are bought in because people will fight for money, but they'll die for a cause. Do you have a cause? Now, this isn't always going to work because sometimes people just are not interested in going where you're going. I found, even in my own life, personal life, right? I've, I've, uh, hey, hey, sometimes teenage years are tough when you've got young ones, but sometimes your teenager isn't interested in going where you're going. And sometimes you just have to say, okay, well, here's where I'm going. And the door is always open to my vehicle when you're ready. And if you're ready to join me, that's hard sometimes. It's difficult. But you can't always, you can't, you can't force people. You have to allow them to work it out in their minds. And sometimes it's really about spreading good seed and continuing to spread good seed of ideas in terms of how we desire to have others to benefit and blossom from this journey together. Sometimes, you know what? You're not always going to hit a home run every time that you're, that you're sharing a, a better vision for the future. Sometimes it takes new context and new ways and sometimes just more seed, more seed, more seed. In fact, I love the analogy I heard this years ago about uh, an old friend who had a lawn that was fully infested with weeds and he started to put seed down, good seed. And every season he put more and more and more good seed and the good seed began to take in the soil and it began to choke out the weeds until eventually he had a bright, green, beautiful lawn full of good seed. Why? Because he didn't grow weary in doing good. He didn't grow weary in planting more and more and more good seed. It has to be on good soil. It can't be on rocky soil, as the old parable states. It can't be on thorny soil. It can't be on soil that has a little bit of of good dirt because it won't last either. It has to be good fertile soil. However, if it is, and that good seed begins to take, sometimes it takes time. Don't expect people to join you right away, all the time. It's okay if they don't. And sometimes it's okay for you to take a different route, go a different direction. Perhaps that soil is not fertile, and you've got to go find new soil. That's how life is. That's how leadership is. Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to find that those who are supposed to be with you will bind with you. Now, of course, you have to locate them. You have to be accessible. You have to be attractive. You have to be 
uh, differentiate yourself. I, if you've listened to the show, you know three questions you always have to ask. Do I know what my, my followers want and need? Do I have the capacity to meet those needs? And do I stand out in the crowd? Am I different? Be different. In the accounting world, for example, which uh, if, you, if, you, if you've heard me talk, I own an accounting advisory firm. Most of it is a pretty dry environment. Uh, a lot of accountants are, sorry colleagues, but uh, not a ton of personality. However, we love personality. We love soft skills. And so there are those of us who actually are engaging and fun and empathetic and warm and fuzzy and care. Not that, not that you don't care if you're not empathetic. And so what happens when, for example, a new possible team member comes in and they're like, wow, your culture is different. You are super cool and your, your people are easy to get along with and they're laughing in the office. At the same time, they're competent and they're, they're driven and they're getting the work done. It's a differentiator. Do you differentiate as a leader? Do you stand out by, by truly communicating in a compelling way the, the higher direction? And here's the other part of it. In so doing, am I creating an experience for my stakeholders that's so compelling that they are drawn, I would even argue sometimes irresistibly, to the direction, to the goal, because it is important to them. It is purposeful. It helps them to meet their needs. Because if you can help people solve their problems, they can help solve yours. That's a fundamental of leadership. So if you're having trouble today influencing others, I would encourage you to go back and revise your compelling future and how it integrates those who you're called to serve alongside of to create an experience for them that magnifies their own understanding of how the future can be better than the past.